Welcome, Thyme Lewis. So great to have you. Thank you. Nice to be here to be seen and not viewed. <laughs> well, um, there's so much to dive into. Um, but first, how do you define yourself? I have your bio, but I want you to explain who you are. Complicated <laughs> question, I mean, because we're forever changing, right? Our cells are constantly manifesting and uh, growing and evolving and, and adapting and uh, coming out of the, the most bizarre experience the entire planet has had as a population. Uh, COVID, uh, yeah, how, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> That's great. So I'm know. hearing, yeah, lots of in process stuff, which is cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have a history. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. And there's which a has, future. <laughs> right. And there's a future. I'm informed from that. But I'm really wide open to learning new things too. And uh, yeah. Beautiful. Love it. Well, your bio tells us you're an actor, an author, humanitarian, former stuntman, and most recently you've written a new book, which is super exciting. And I'm excited to dive into that more. Um, yeah, so let's let's jump in. Tell us about this new book because it does touch on the themes of awareness and authenticity. Okay, um, may I ask, um, when I'm looking at you, am I looking at your eyes right now? Right now you are, yeah. Okay, that helps. Um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> my, my book uh, is about a, a guy that's loosely based on some of my life experiences and uh, how I navigate. Uh, and then, of course, he's infused and injected with all sorts of uh, incredible energy that makes him excel in areas that others have uh, others do mediocre work and he does exceptional work and uh, and with that he's a, a good natured uh, hero type that that works for FEMA <laughs> that works for FEMA yeah yeah and does this this does draw on your own personal experience is that right yeah yeah i had an incredible uh season with fema during Irma in 2017. i was deployed to three different locations some of the hardest hit in the panhandle of florida then eventually to costa rica excuse me puerto rico and uh that was like An apocalypse. It was very apocalyptic. I mean, telephone poles sideways, uh, bodies. Like it was, it was pretty horrific, and uh, it was much like a war zone. Yeah. And, uh, the first boots on the ground were there only a few weeks before I was. Uh, we made great progress uh, in a really hard situation. I know there's still elements of electricity going on that. It's just a really hard, it's a really hard quagmire of a, of a situation down there. But everybody that I worked with were wonderful. The teams were wonderful. I felt like we did really good things. Yeah. And what has writing about that experience provided you? Well, you know, I didn't actually have time to write when I was there because we were so busy. Uh, but I just kept, it just kept leaving these imprints on my mind memory uh, months later I just started writing little little short little stories that happened uh, things that I saw uh, things I was glad that I'd that I had seen and witnessed and discovered uh, and then I also remembered one day uh, reminding myself take time for myself because I was getting, we, we were all in such heavy duty waves of 
um, pain and suffering and, and devastation. So um, it was, I was reminded that I had taken one day <laughs> before dark, um, I decided I could make it back to base camp and then go down to the end of the road, which I hadn't discovered. I was just told that there was a beach there. And I found this magical beach, and I was the only one there, except for four of the, um, these poor dogs had survived this hurricane, and they were flea infested, and I, it was, uh, it was, it was me and the mangy dogs, very, very mangy, and, uh, on this beach, and, uh, I gave them all, all the snacks that I had, and then I, <laughs> I didn't want to touch them, and then... <laughs> And then I went down and jumped in the ocean and had a swim and and, uh, and felt refreshed and energized and went back and had dinner and, you know, did it all over again. But uh, it was a reminder of uh, a time for ourselves. For sure. And I know you're very connected to the ocean. Yeah. What did, I mean, and just hearing the story too, it sounds like it really provided a lot of relief and rejuvenation. Um, what are other ways you take care of yourself? Well, I'm kind of an avid exercise guy. I always think like just to try to have a sweat every day. Um, uh, I've kind of changed my, as we grow older, we, uh, what we can endure, what our bodies can handle, and what our injuries are, or trauma that we've had. Uh, but I, I like to cycle and, uh, a few years ago, I learned to kite surf, but it was a big deal for me. And, yeah, just anything physical. It doesn't have to be weights. For a long time, it was weights almost every morning, uh, super early, you know, 4.35 in the morning for an hour, hour and a half. But I've moved away from that. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's always evolving and changing, I think, too, like the ways that we can take care of ourselves. Um, just having that awareness that it is going to change can be a really um, helpful thing, you know, as you said, as we age or our abilities change or whatever, you know, being open to that evolution is so, so positive. Um, well, I know that you have had this acting career and that's probably been so demanding on you and, and your body and your life and your lifestyle. I'm curious how kind of awareness showed up for you in that space. Well, you know, I haven't acted for a long time. Only recently did this new thing come up. First, uh, by doing the book and deciding that I would do the audio book also. Um, and whilst doing that, it, it reignited some emotional life in me that I felt had been maybe dormant for a while and it made me want to uh, explore it again uh, at this time and so um, yeah I have um, regarding your question specifically I think um, it depends on people's craft and how they operate I mean some people need to live and breathe it. Other, others can turn it on and off. Others are just great liars. Others are just great pretenders. Or um, they put it so close up in front of them that it becomes most of their vision to where they believe it. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. they, and they can just hyper focus on it. And so um, for me, I feel like and it's in hand in hand with the writing that I just needed more life experience to have more of a repertoire or more of a, uh, a palette of colors to work with. And uh, in the last 10 years, I feel I have. Mm. So that combined with FEMA and everything else has um, enriched me. Yeah. It's so cool to hear how you're defining your own authentic path. You know, I, I'm hearing a lot of just like uh, learning and gathering and, and experiencing life 
and how that really informs maybe the next steps you take. Would you say that's something that, that the path you're kind of weaving? It is, and not jumping so fast at uh, whatever it is. Mm. Like, um, letting things come up organically before you just reach and grab it. Totally. Unlike a, a video game or something that I have no interest in. <laughs> Did you used to operate in that way in the past where it was like going out and grabbing? Well, I, I remember reading something earlier this morning about it was, uh, I think Suzuki said it, but basically, you know, everything is possible, yet uh, for the wise or the known, there's only a few things that actually are hmm. choices that you should be taking for the best journey. Um, I probably just murdered what, what Suzuki <laughs> said, but um, yeah, before I was pretty wide open. It was just, I just find like now time is precious and, uh, and uh, how you spend your time is and who you spend it with is really important. Yeah. So how do you determine that? Well, uh, uh, I spend a lot of time alone uh, where I live. Uh, I feel like I'm on the edge of the world. I'm on a beautiful uh, sandy bluff over a, a, a wide open Pacific Ocean. and, and uh, It leaves my imagination pretty active. Mm. And then... Uh, few days a week I I go and uh, be social but uh, right now I'm, I'm just in this other place where um, I'm able to really use my imagination and writing so, and that's really helpful but we are social animals <laughs> without <laughs> without uh, suffocating myself or something becoming I don't know whatever that means but um, we do I do need social so I, I do step out but I like those runs and rides on the, I like being alone too. Yeah. Sounds like you're really comfortable with it as well. I think a lot of people struggle with um, the concept of being alone. Like the idea of it can sound a little bit scary for whatever reason, but you sound really comfortable with yourself and being in your own company. How did you get to that point? I shut my phone off. <laughs> that easy <laughs> yeah 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 have you always been that comfortable with being alone I don't know um, <laughs> I, I, with good music on I, I used to go for runs for hours with great music mm -hmm. on and your heart pumping and uh, yeah, running along the bluff at Santorini or running along the coast of Big Sur down Piper Beach or uh, yeah, alone time is good because it rejuvenates, gives you time, even on drives up the coast or down the coast of LA where you are, uh, on a five hour drive, I want two hours of just quiet. Yeah. I do. Just to think. Mm -hmm. And there's other, you know, I'm, I'm good at, uh, compartmentalizing time and going, okay, for an hour, I'm going to read or an hour, I'm going to talk to so-and-so or, or give be available to that, to listening to what somebody wants to share and, yeah. and go through and whether it's my sister, my mom, whoever, you know, that's important to me. Mm -hmm. um, but also that alone time is really, really important. For mm -hmm. example, I remember, um, I don't remember who I was saying it to, but I remember, um, saying no this is oh i remember who it was yeah um, for me um honoring the planet that universe is on our side that universal truth knowing there's a power that's greater and knowing that there are times where we need to be by ourselves go through these processes and if you will pray or meditate on and see what comes up from that. And then you can take that enrichment forward. And it just yeah. 
if you're not loving yourself, then how can you be available? I mean, I don't want to be cliche, but you need to do those things for yourself. So, yeah, uh, I work yeah. it's beautiful. I think it's, it, it might sound cliche, but it's kind of the, I think the truest thing, which is self love really, it, it, it provides so much for everyone around you, not just you, but if you're not caring for yourself and loving yourself truly, you really have a different life experience, <laughs> at least in my, in my opinion. But, um, I love it. Your practices sound really like, uh, solid, really solid. <laughs> Do you waver ever? <laughs> Do you ever have a day where you're like, eh, I'm not going to work out. I'm going to just eat a burger and be okay. <laughs> oh, I don't have an issue with burgers. <laughs> I, I like okay fries, <laughs> fries whatever maybe. your treat is okay <laughs> although um we had scallop potatoes last night at the rio grill wrapped in bacon with chimichurri oh, okay. wow on a veal chop with a five oh peppercorn God. crust how do you Three feel today <laughs> fantastic sometimes we need that type of iron you know for sure Agreed. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite treat? This week? I don't know. You know, I, I a long time ago, uh, I got into smoothies. And, um, you can cover a lot of territory with smoothies. So, <laughs> you know, there's all sorts of goodies <laughs> that can go in there. Yeah. I don't know that I have a favorite treat. Um, I don't know, last week or a couple of weeks ago, I was really into dates. Um, Love dates. Oh my God. That's like the healthiest treat you can have. <laughs> I, I was, it's amazing how many dates there are. <laughs> right. The variation. I know. If you go to the right farmer's market, holy smokes. I know. Yeah. yeah. And in and LA, Sam it's next level because they're all just right here, you know, in the, mm -hmm. the Valley farms. But yeah, that's right. That's right. You were saying. That's right. <laughs> Same with Santa Cruz, um, that there's a guy, yeah, there's a guy off of Pacific at the farmer's market. That's amazing. He's, he's got a whole bunch of choices. <laughs> yeah. What I love about dates is they stay on the tree for at least a hundred days. So like they're getting all of that sun energy for a hundred days because they start, you know, whole and beautiful and smooth and then they get all wrinkly from the sun. And it's like such a potent, yeah, that's like a health food. Come on. I'm talking about like Snickers bars. <laughs> uh, I like a Snickers. I, I think their commercials are <laughs> hilarious. I don't watch a ton of television, but um, <laughs> Snickers, you know, it does change you. It energizes <laughs> you. And that's why I think that whole thing where they have one guy looking like somebody else until he has a Snicker bar. I mean, it, you know, it's like somebody that, you know, has low sugar or something. They go like, <laughs> They uh, just, you know, <laughs> feed that kid, feed him. Yeah. <laughs> I like Snickers too. It's one of my favorites. It's got a lot um, of stuff in there. The caramel, the peanuts, the chocolate. It's a good combo. <laughs> Have you ever had a time that you can think of where you were completely inauthentic to who you are? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and I think that's happened when I um, run out of energy. Um, mm. You know, there's that thing where you, you know, like you feed the beast or you, um, some people, some um, people in the world are really loving giving. There's a, a back and a forth, a give and take. Uh, and then there's some people that are, uh, Draculitic, like vampires. There's, there's also, there's everything. But sometimes <laughs> uh, you, um, I've been caught up in giving, 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 and then run out of energy and gone. Wait a minute, who am I? What, what's going on here? And um, I didn't like that self. I didn't like that. So, um, yeah, that that would be an example. 
Yeah, for sure. How did you realize that you were overgiving? Because sometimes we get so stuck in that cycle, you know, because that's what we grew up with or that's what we're used to. Like, how did you become aware that you were in that cycle? Behavior. Hmm. Behavior. Yeah, my behavior. Looking at myself. Mm -hmm. We look at ourselves every morning in the mirror, right? Brush our teeth, brush our teeth, make our bed. We have a routine. Sometimes you go, wait a minute, you know, it's been four days. I didn't have, I didn't wake up and have my smoothie or I didn't wake up and have my coffee or I didn't wake up and have my scrambled eggs or my, at one time, egg whites like Rocky, right? So <laughs> whatever it is, um, you go, ooh, I'm missing that. And uh, how long we go down that path and then we go, wait a minute, I'm going way too fast or I'm way too left or way too to right. And when I do that, when that, when that's happened, it's happened a few times, um, or you take a really big hit, like a really big loss, you go, you have to like, wait a minute, you got to really check yourself and yeah. scale everything out. Um, I slow way down, go back to real basics. Yeah, for sure. And that goes with diet. Mm. Yeah. Both mentally and, you know, food and what you're, what you're putting into your mind, like epidemics, what you're seeing around you, your environment, who you're around, you know, like bring it, that old thing of, you know, I need to go home and just regroup, be around family and four people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think we all need those little wake up calls or those moments where we just hit that point of like, whoa, I'm not. I'm not doing what I am meant to be doing for me. I'm not on my path anymore. Um, but yeah, I love the back to the basics. I think that's a great way to regroup. Um, food is so helpful. Food is medicine. People. I love that you ex gave the example of the people you surround yourself with because they do make up our experience and our thought processes and all that stuff. What else? Anything else that brings you back to center? Um, going to a place that uh, you're familiar with from your childhood. Mm. What's that for you? That always does. Uh, for my sister, it's the property we grew up on in Big Sur. For me, it's anywhere in Big Sur. Mm. Uh, and also, um, walking on Carmel Beach can do that. Uh, remembering a friend who's no longer with us and just really centering on him or her uh, being grateful uh, I mentioned earlier time is precious like nobody gets out alive here so uh, true. <laughs> I, I sat with a dear friend of mine's older sister last night and her husband, and he has Parkinson's. And uh, it's interesting. I, I I didn't know that he had it. I just met him last night, but uh, I sensed something was going on. And he was an avid skier, and uh, talked about a shoulder injury that he had. <clears throat> but he could see that I could see, and she could, you know. And then she opened the envelope there. It was a really beautiful exchange because I have a dear neighbor who's going through that same battle. And uh, you, when you're around when somebody has an ailment and you, you see other, there are some people that are wonderful at being kind and they're aware and they're acknowledging without being offensive or whatever mm -hmm. and there's others that are just rough for whatever reason and they bump into things and they bump into these friends of yours that you and you, you try to gentle the blows you know soften the blows rather and um and so we had this really great dialogue for about an hour last night about uh, navigating navigating change mm -hmm. navigating getting older navigating loss 
um, identity loss, identity change, faculties that go away, and, uh, and how time is practiced. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting dialogue. I hope for more with that. I'd love to hear if there's anything more you'd like to share about your book. Um, I know it's it's a recent thing and very exciting. So yeah, anything else to share about that? Well, I'm working on the second book now and it just, oh. it, you know, it came to me because I've always wanted to write and back to that, you know, time is practice and our faculties and being able to access all these memories and things that we've jotted down and wanted to expand on. And um, yeah. so I just formulated this thing of, oh, why don't I write one great story a year hmm. and that'll just be the next 10 years all of a sudden because time goes by so fast, as you know, and um, it just gave me another little purpose to do. And I don't mean to say little at all because it, it's, yeah. um, it's pretty consuming, um, but it's, you know, working with your faculties, going at it, uh, full imagination. Uh, and uh, I'm enjoying the process. And I, I, I already know, like, it's so funny because this book, I've already, we've already, all of us, have, as a whole team, we've all proved it so many times. And just the other day, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, it would be so great to end that first chapter right here because it's such a better hook than over there. But that works too. And, and my friend said to me, Allison, she's up in Canada. She's one of the polishers. She said to me, you know, time. Every writer does this. It's a child. And, yeah. you know, you can't helicopter that child forever. You got to just <laughs> let it go out to the world. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, helicopter parenting, I think it's called it. And, uh, and so I've released it. Uh, I'm deep into the second book. I think the second book is even more interesting than the first. I think it's got better pacing. But uh, there's... You, I mean, they're, you know, I don't know. We're, we're talking about children here, right? <laughs> it's okay. You can pick a favorite. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, anyway, uh, it's just interesting and it's fun. And, and um, if, if they do great, great. If they don't, they don't. But um, I'm getting them out of my system, which is wonderful. And uh, I'm finding new adventures in it. And I, I hope that a cool book tour comes from it. I, uh, years ago, uh, had the the uh, wonderful experience, uh, the privilege of working with wonderful people on a TV show for many many years, and uh, I would fly all around the country almost every weekend. And it's really how I discovered America, and how I learned about all these different wonderful towns and cities, and and just the whole country. I've been to forty eight states, and. Uh, and this character is a lot like that in the sense mm. of disaster work. And uh, I think about I think about that time a lot uh, as I as I write because it really influences uh, storyline, yeah, and location. So mm. uh, that's pretty cool. I think also, and you probably read this in one of the one of the news things that's one of the press pieces that's coming out um i time jump which um gives me a lot of freedom um i already have his you know basically every five years what's going on in his life up until where this first book launches a week's worth the title but um that freedom to time jump back and forth at different points is really really heavy. and even in uh, in doing that, for instance, I was in a bookstore the other day. I love bookstores. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I saw the adventures of something and it reminded me of the adventures of Tintin, uh, that great Austrian author and, 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 and story storyline. And I thought, Ooh, the adventures of Mac <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as a child in Big Sur, you know what I mean? Ooh, yeah. Um, you know, where, where he gets a lot of his. Uh, architectural uh, awareness and uh, and building skills from starting with tree forts, which I did with mm -hmm. all my buddies, Sycamore Canyon as kids. So um, 
yeah, you know, I, I don't know who my, I have an idea who the audience is for this book because it is a, a mother son um, relationship. And, um, and then there are some other true characters that um, will actually be in, in all storylines. Um, but uh, if I were to um, parallel, if I, if I may be so bold, I, a lot of my inspiration um, is uh, the Jack Reacher series by Lee Child. Um, but I also like other, I mean, there's, there's so many, I love, I love uh, Robinson Caruso and I love uh, Treasure Island by Robert Rick Stevenson and I love Hemingway and I like, I mean, there's so many great writers and so um, I hope that I can um, give the audience the ability to escape into the book, into the story, and get pulled into some adventure and, uh, and have fun along the way. So that's, right. that's my goal. I love it. I love it. That sounds great. It sounds like, it sounds like even you writing it provides you that escape. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's nice. That's nice. So what's your vision? Like I'm hearing a little bit of it with the books, but like any, any thought to like your overall vision for the rest of your life? <laughs> mm. I went to a New Year's Eve party and uh, we all made something delicious. And we were asked to write what went into that dish. Not just the physical, but what thoughts went into it with setting intention. Mm. Nice. And the main thing always for me is that health, freedom, pain free in my body and mentally, mm. most important, however that is. And so, um, you know, we're all here in this time right here and now, but imagine living a thousand years ago or imagine something I saw where everybody had all this armor on and they were going to door to door, you know, like, missing teeth and you know like the whole the whole thing of uh everything and just what that was then compared to where we're at now and i i've always said to myself i'd be living on an island somewhere where i was eating coconuts and mangoes and bikes <laughs> and swimming in the ocean every day and clean and fresh and you know what i mean yeah. so i i uh it's definitely uh i've done that in this lifetime and, and uh i think more of that is in the future yeah nice is that is that yeah, I think Can that's I get a, in there and massage that a little bit. <laughs> it's a great vision, and it sounds like it's a creative vision too. There's creativity I'm hearing as a big part of of what you're um, excited about and what feeds you. So that's beautiful. I I like uh, snowboarding and skiing and and, and winter winter time like that. But um, I, I only for that I would want to live in the snow or that type of. <laughs> situation i i've been very fortunate and uh i'm a big i'm a big believer in what we surround ourselves mm. and how that affects our lives yeah absolutely yeah i have absolutely. a lot of uh, a lot of ocean around me normally a lot of, I, I i like going to the city and i can you know the after thing where you you dig in and you get gritty for a little while and and that Bosch TV show is that, that legacy show that mm. I die. That is that. Uh, yeah. But I like the beach life. Yeah. Yeah. Sun Beautiful. and wrinkles and all of it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> More wrinkles, please. More wrinkles. I'll take them. Yeah. That's lovely. That's so lovely. Well, well thank anything, you so much, Lisa, for having yeah, me. Yeah, anything else to share? I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> www.thymelewisbooks.com. I mean, that's Perfect. the site. And I'll be on Amazon. And um, yeah, I'm just moving around and just doing this next chapter of life. Love it. 
Well, thanks for sharing and giving us a peek into your world and how you stay true to yourself. It's really, it's really inspiring. So thank you. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. Till next time. Hmm.